Thanks for staying. Now, President Akufuado is calling on all African leaders to realign their economic policies to ensure a booming electricity network in West Africa. The president, who was speaking at the 12th General Assembly of West African Power Pool in Af Africa, Nana Ado noted a rapid economic boom of West African economies will require the doubling of investments in the energy sector to create supply for the high demand for power. As we gather here to discuss the regional electricity market, we must recall that while the challenges are immense, we must fundamentally realign our energy systems to achieve a system. WAP has what it takes in terms of capacity and capability to create the regional electricity market. This is the surest way to harness the abundant energy resources of the region, to accelerate the socio-economic development of the region and improve the living standards of our people. We must travel down this road. Alongside the risks, this is a moment of great opportunity for WAP and West Africa. I'm convinced now, the agreement amongst West African countries to integrate our electricity network for the region's development and economic takeoff would engender strong synergies and significant complementarities. The outcome of the integration should be an electricity system in which uninterrupted supply is the expectation rather than the exception. Now, Ghana will be joining the rest of West Africa for a regional electricity market by 2018. This was also made known by the Energy Minister, Boache Jaku, at the 12th General Assembly of West African Power Pool here in Accra. According to the minister, the move will significantly reduce cost of electricity and also enable the constant supply of power for economic transformation. Ghana is honoured to have been selected during the 11th General Assembly held in Ouagadougou in 2016 to host this event, which brings together renowned experts in the electricity sector in West Africa, international funding agencies, and the donor community to address issues relating to the common enterprise establishing a regional electricity market by 2019. The theme for the 12th General Assembly is Regional Electricity Market Ensuring West Africa Integration. This is in line with the vision of WAP, which is integrate the regional power systems into a unified regional electricity market with the expectation that such mechanisms would over the medium to long term ensure citizens of ECOWAS member states with stable and reliable electricity supply at competitive cost. And later in an interview, the CEO of Gridco, Jonathan Amakuba, shared some thoughts with Joy Business. Tuesday, the committees met at a plenary where the uh, consolidated their reports. Wednesday, we had a meeting with the donor agencies who provide the funds for the projects that the WAP countries undertake. And yesterday, we had the executive board of the WAP meeting to ratify the documents and the resolutions that will be presented before the General Assembly, which is happening today. Still on the marketplace, away from power, reviewing the current tax structure for businesses is still a major concern for most firms. This is despite some marginal reviews carried out in the 2017 budget by government. So as the finance minister gets ready to present the 2018 budget to parliament on November 15, we gauge expectations of businesses ahead of the presentation. Kwame Adukufo is president of the Ghana Chamber of Mines. We encourage many uh, manufacturers to participate in our mining chain, but then there's that requirement or need for a deliberate uh, push by government to make these uh, uh, players competitive. Yes, so we need more incentives in that regard. Yeah. 
On the 15th of November, we're going to be expecting the finance minister to present the budget. And I believe uh, from your own perspective, you may have specific needs in terms of the uh, contributions to this budget regarding the mining sector. Help us understand what you're going to be expecting from the budget. Well, I'll start with exploration, and that really fuels the growth of the industry. I think I would uh, uh, request that uh, VAT on exploration is, is removed because that doesn't make that sector competitive. I would also uh, request uh, a, a stable fiscal uh, regime and, and more um, more consistency in terms of the um, regulations, the fiscal regulations, and um, I would of course not uh, expect an increase in, in taxes. On his part, Executive Director of Crave Ghana Limited, Reverend Kennedy Okusun, expressed the hope that the 2018 budget will touch on areas that will motivate foreign direct investment and participation in the economy. Hoping that uh, 2018 the budget will address some of the uh, loopholes uh, which were there in the previous years. I'm hoping that in the 2018 budget we will have the Minister of Finance tell us specifics uh, which will motivate uh, foreign direct investment, which will mo motivate participation uh, in the economy, that will help to galvanize uh, the resources that we have here, which will inure to the benefit of both the local investors and the foreign investors. All right, so on the marketplace, let's moving on. And um, the country would be hoping to secure the entire amount targeted in the energy bond sale. This was after it struggled to secure all the 3.6 billion CDs for the 10-year ESLA PLC bond. Now, joining me right here in the studio, George Riafi, as usual, has been following this particular development and will answer a few questions. Mm. Now, George, are we likely to hit the target now? That's a billion-dollar question that I would <laughs> struggle to still give you the answer. I said yesterday, engaging the managers, they were quite optimistic that uh, they will get their, their entire amount. But it looks like also on the side of investors, they still have some issues. and. Uh, it's still too close to call in terms of them securing a very successful bond at 5 p.m. today. Has anything changed by way of the percentage of the interest rate? Well, as I said yesterday, we still knew that we were working with the 19.5. And don't forget that most of these investors were saying that unless government is prepared to pay them more than 20%, and they are not willing to extend that funds or those funds to government. So it is still difficult to say right now whether we are indeed going to get all the amount as of 5 o'clock today. As of the other week, we had raised 902 million Ghana cities. And uh, it's still Hopefully too close likely. to say that indeed uh, we raise all the 3.6 billion by 5 p.m. today. So if we should or if we, uh, we fail to raise this amount, what is going to happen? Now, two things here. We still have the ESLA process that's supposed to be coming in. And what we understand that over the 10-year period, uh, we can get up more than 6 billion Ghana cities coming from the ESLA uh, process. It means that the process to finally clear all the debts could take a while. But I don't know whether government might come up with a new instrument again in terms to raise enough funds to clear this debt. It's still a $1 billion question. Lots of questions coming up as in what next? All right, so, so what next? That's a million dollar question. <laughs> what next? Another new mm. instrument should be coming up lately. Or try and go back to these banks and renegotiate the process in claim debts. Don't forget that over the 10-year period or even 7-year period, they can still raise enough money to clear the debts in the industry sector. But when you speak to a lot of these banks, they need money. Most of these banks, you have here, can tell you that they are in serious financial distress. And some of them could even go down or collapse as we speak today. Mm. So they need that fresh cash that these investors are bringing in so they can actually clean their space a little bit or reorganize their books. So any okay. delay in paying these debts would just not be good for these commercial banks. Also, don't forget that for some of these companies, the BBCs, the ECGs, they need this fresh cash to pay these debts so that at least they can go to these banks and ask for fresh credits to reinvest in the business and expand the operations as well. 
Now, you've just uh, returned mm. from the West Africa Power Pool Conference. You've been speaking with the VRA boss. What's next? What's he saying? Emmanuel Nchidakwa, he's so optimistic that even the fact that government has, the fact that government has started the process, mm -hmm. it means a lot to them. Then they can go to the banks. They, they owe them about 4.2 uh, billion or so. They can go back to these banks and convince them that the process to clear the debts have started. So can you then give us fresh credit again? Don't forget, the more expensive is it for VRA to generate power, it has an impact on the price that they sell to the distribution companies, Gridco. It has an impact where they sell to electricity, ECG. It has an impact on the final price that we are free, you pay. So if it's going to improve their financial situation for them to get more from their creditors and suppliers, he was also optimistic that this process could even help reduce tariffs. Don't forget the Minister of Energy has spoken about the fact that before the year ends, they are hoping that that policy or that plan will be realized. So if they're doing this and that process has started, that would go a long way to impact on the tariffs that you and I pay at the end of the month or now because of prepaid some can even be done daily, depending on your sure, consumption sure. <laughs> in now, the house. Now, George, away from this energy sector bond, I'm also aware that come next week, government intends to raise some $100 million in domestic mm -hmm. bonds. Mm -hmm. Why and That's is a, a dollar bond. Exactly. And you could, we are still struggling to get some understanding from government why they are doing this. But it looks like they have certain things that they want to come with these funds in. Even though CD is what we actually use here we understand that they need to have multiple streams of financing that they can tap into. So the range is between 50 million and 100 million Ghana series and all other things being equal. This bond could be raised next Tuesday. Some people would ask that you're struggling in raising SLA paper. Exactly. Why wouldn't they suffer? Sure. Okay, the argument here is that the SLA paper is more of a corporate bond that is not supported directly by government. And for our 10-year papers, our 10-year bonds, most of them are participated or taken up by offshore investors, these banks are outside the country. So there are laws in their country, or even what guides their investment is that they want to make sure that every investment that they put their funds in, these are pension funds, they are supported by government, they are guaranteed by government. So it is likely that they would get this dollar bond. But don't forget, that's supposed to be a local dollar bond. Yeah. And we are trying to also discourage people from holding dollar accounts. So I'm going to see a situation where people who have CDs will go in, rush and get dollars, mm. and come and invest in this bond. What will be the possible implications on the Ghana city? And what exactly is this $100 million bond targeted it, at? It, 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 it is still, we're still not clear on what they're really going to use these funds for. But we understand that just to improve uh, government finances locally, and that's what we understand. But again, it's interesting that what could be the impact of this development in trying to encourage people to invest in dollar assets locally. It's not going to show up our debt position. It, it's a problem as well. <laughs> and it's a problem. Almost 139 billion as of June this year, mm. the IMF was pushing them to put the ESLA bond on their paper. Maybe government knew they were going to do this. That is why they didn't want to put the mm. ESLA paper on the debt stock. So it will mean that the debt stock will go up. But the good thing when you engage the IMF and the, I, the World Bank is that the economy is expected to expand. So the whole argument here is that, yes, you can have high debt, but you have enough assets. Are you growing the economy? Are you expanding the economy that you can fall on Maybe in, ten, in times when you fail to fall on these assets to pay the debt? So the more oil that you have, exactly. the JP Morgans and the Morgan Stanleys and all the rest will say mm -hmm. that, okay, you have these assets that you can fall on in crisis, sell and pay the debt so they'll put in their money. Let's talk about the, the upcoming budgets. Mm -hmm. What are your expectations, briefly? For well, you? what is the theme of the budget? The theme you are hearing industrialization. Okay. So we we'll see that government might still go ahead with some new policies that would help grow the economy. We are talking about, we are hearing there's a Marshall Plan for Agriculture. Okay. Another ambitious policy by government to turn around the fortunes of our grid. So again, you see that policies should be directed towards the agricultural sector in terms of funding, in terms of tax breaks and all those things. So it is interesting. We hear that government might still go ahead reviewing taxes because the plan was that they are going to spread this over a two-year period. But again, at a time when revenue is struggling, as of July this year, you're looking for to raise almost 24 billion Ghana cities. We've done just 21 billion. That's have implications on projects that they're going to fund. So 
We'll be looking forward to see whether they will still go ahead with plans to review these taxes or not. This year, they were hoping to spend almost 60 billion Ghana cities as again 43 billion revenue. Mm. Would that influence the targets that they are going to set? What about the deficit as well? Would this revenue impact on the end of year deficit? Tax reviews, do you have any hints? The petroleum taxes, some of them are. We, we, we don't have anything right now, but what we've had pick up information mm. as a corporate tax that uh, they are still looking into it, and maybe and possibly there could be that some reduction. Below 20%? Uh, not necessarily below 20%, but there could be some revision right. in the rate. Thank you very much, George. Thank you so much, Yafi. <laughs> and that was George, Yafi, my colleague, bringing us up to speed with developments on the Estla bond, which is expected to close finally today. Away from that, Chief Executive Officer of Logisec, Derek Denchi, has urged the adoption, technology, adoption of technology by financial service providers, especially within the microfinance sector. This, he noted, will help reduce the incidence of fraud and poor monitoring in microfinance institutions as has been experienced in the past. He spoke with Joy Business at a close funding round for Logisec Ghana Limited here in Accra. The close funding round witnessed Isar Venture Capital invest an amount of $100,000 into the activities of fintech company Logisail. Isar Venture Capital is an investment vehicle that extends credit to small and medium scale companies. In an interview with Joy Business co founder of Logisail, Farida Bedre, advocated more funding for small and medium scale tech companies as these firms are growing fast. You, you, you want the economy to grow. Technology is a big part of, of the growth of the economy. Technology needs to be needs to, to be upskilled. We need to, to, to support our local our local industry and stop bringing foreign foreign software into, into, into the country. We have capable people who are more than, than prepared to develop the solution that we need in this country. And believe me, the advantage of, st uh, of, um, of investing in local entrepreneurs is that the money st stays in the country. That it doesn't get repatriated to other foreign institutions. Secondly, it, it, it is a great opportunity to, produce, to promote jobs in this country. Logicel Ghana Limited operates a microfinance banking software platform in Ghana powering the operations of over 280 financial institutions in the country. Chief Executive of Logicel, Derek Denchi, said the use of technology in the financial sector will go a long way to improve credit availability. Once we clean up the microfinance, most of them are lending very expensively because nobody knows what they're doing and they are borrowing so high. Once we're able to clean up, provide clean data, we know most investors will want to give more money to microfinance and that will reduce their cost of borrowing and that will impact their lending rates too as well. So indirectly, it's the final end person who is going to benefit from this infrastructure we keep putting in place. Once it's clean up, once they can borrow cheaply, they can also lend cheaply. And we're also making sure that they also submit the necessary regulatory reports so that they will be monitored and supervised. We think about 60-70% of the on-bank need such services for microfinance companies. On his part, managing partner for South Venture Capital, Dr. Mike Incansa, stressed the need for more investments in the fast-growing tech space. Well, Africa has missed the boat on all the major technological revolutions you know, in the past 200 years, right? And this is one particular um, phase, uh, you know, the ICT revolution, which we can't really afford to be left behind in, okay? Um, and so, to the extent that the government can actually uh, facilitate technology transfer uh, and strategic investment, focused investment in, in that sector, you know, I think it would go, it would go a long way. So, um, so the government actually has to step in, and, and this is something that a lot of, if you look at a lot of the um, uh, emerging economies in Asia, you know, their governments have actually uh, been, been a lot more um, um, active in encouraging and fostering more investment in that sector because the private sector would always follow the lead of the government. And, and if the government does not step in with, you know, policy directives and incentives. Sheila Tamaklu, Joy Business. Now, players in the housing industry are optimistic effective collaboration between government, private sector and potentially address, will potentially address Ghana's housing needs. The country's growing housing deficit, which currently stands at 1.7 million uni units, is still a worry to many people. This and other challenges are what Multi-TV's annual Habitat Fair seek to address.
Prince Apia has been monitoring preparations ahead of the opening today and has filed this report. Mamata. Goal 11 of the Sustainable Development Goals demands signatories ensure inclusive human settlement and management. <laughs> this, however, seems far from being achieved as observed by Dr. Divine Ahaji of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. The lecturer at the College of Settlement Planning is worried Ghana's pace towards inclusive society is too slow. Sincere apologies for the loss of sound on that tape, but meanwhile, the Habitat Fair, Multi TV Habitat Fair, has now opened in Kumasi and, of course, brewing with activities in the housing industry. And on that note, wrap up this afternoon's edition of the Marketplace. Many thanks for watching. Do enjoy the weekend and good afternoon.